Switchcraft is brought to you live three times a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 3 p.m. U.S. Eastern and on Saturday at whatever time I can get to it. Tune in live over at twitch.tv slash run, jump, stomp. This episode of Switchcraft was brought to you by Omer Javid. Support Switchcraft and my other content for as little as a dollar over at uh, patreon.com slash run, jump, stomp. I almost forgot the name of the website, so we'll call that patron. We'll save. Okay. Um, SC186. Switchcraft episode 186 is brought to you. Let's try that again. Switchcraft episode 186 is also brought to you by OP Seat. Head on over to runjumpstomp.com slash OP Seat to directly support the show and get a fantastic gaming chair that can support you. I'm sitting in one right now, and it's great. All right, we got that done. And now we can get to the show. Sponsor, save. Um, let's see. Fake news, yeah. That's a pretty good one. Okay. Here we are. Let me click on this. So, today I want to talk a little bit about... We've got E3 coming, and last episode I had a bunch of stuff that may or may not happen... Uh, I, I, I try and stay out of the rumor mill, but when we're, when you're this close to E3, the rumor mill is in full swing and gaming companies start to clam up and there's less and less for us to talk about. So I'm going to report on, uh, the rumors that I hear and always keep in mind that this stuff, take it with a grain of salt. It may be true. It may be not. Um, Pixelpar, who uh, I've actually talked about on the show before, uh, they 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 sometimes get stuff right and sometimes they get stuff wrong. Uh, but they posted that Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu dot com and Pokemon Let's Go Eevee dot com have now been registered via CSC Digital Brand Services. Uh, and this is apparently the company that Nintendo used to uh, register their domain names uh, for uh, both Nintendo and the Pokemon company. Um, th they use um, CSC Digital Brand Services in order to um, register uh, brand domains. Uh, and they both point to the same name server and they contain a blank favicon, uh, which is, if you don't know, if you're watching the video right now, you can see at the top of, uh, of my website here, there's a little tiny red and blue square. That's a favicon. Uh, so, um, I find this to be kind of interesting. Uh, a lot of people think that this means that maybe... We're going to be in, in the new Pokemon game for Nintendo Switch. We're going to be going back to the original region, which I don't know the name of it. I think Kalos or something. But the original region from the from the very first red and blue uh, Pokemon games. And I find that to be pretty interesting to me. Like, for me, I never played the original Pokemon games. I have Pokemon Yellow on my 3DS. And while it's kind of cool... I just don't like playing on my 3DS, so uh, I actually kind of regret buying it. And I would really like it if they would start the whole franchise over. Uh, every Pokemon game is basically the same anyway, just with different things to catch. Uh, and it would be cool to go for, for people who played the original. I think it would be fun for them to go back to that original region. I think it's the Kanto region, maybe. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, I think it would be fun for them and for me. People like me who only ever played XY and um, Omega Ruby, Alpha Sapphire, and a little bit of Sun and Moon. Like, those are the only Pokemon games I played. So going back to the original stuff, I think that that would be nice. Especially if they bring in some of the things that they added to the game to make... Um, how do I phrase it? Uh, to make the gameplay a little more palatable to a modern audience. Uh, Vaxxer... Uh, says to stop living in the past. So, you know, there's that. 
I, I think it's, oh, no, they're talking about time zones. They're not talking about, I thought he meant stop living in the past as in, you know, they don't want to play an old Pokemon game. Uh, but let's go Pikachu. Let's go Eevee. Those might be the titles of the uh, the, the next uh, Pokemon games, the the Pokemon games that Nintendo has already announced that are supposed to be coming to the Nintendo Switch in fiscal year 2018, which is um, any time from April 1st, 2018 to March 31st, 2019. So, you know, we'll see what happens there. I'm not sure. All right. So we'll say Pokemon's Pokemon save. Uh, Super 80 says, my favorite was Fire Red and Leaf Green. <laughs> All right, speaking of leaks, um, and this one, the, the last one makes a lot of sense to me, uh, especially with the fact that uh, that you know I have a domain registration. That makes a lot of sense. Um, the rest of these that I'm going to talk about, this was all leaked via a website called Power Up Gaming. And the reason that I'm talking about this is because all of this stuff seems very reasonable. All of the stuff on this list seems very reasonable. And because it seems so reasonable, it makes me think maybe it's true. But like I said before, you always take all leaks with a grain of salt. So the first thing on here is Fortnite, okay? Fortnite is apparently coming to the Nintendo Switch. Now, I don't know if this is true or not. It would be foolish of the devs over at Fortnite to not bring Fortnite to the Nintendo Switch. It's a big platform. Uh, we've seen a game like Crazy Justice running on the Switch, and it looks it looks just like Fortnite. They are able to get Fortnite to run on my phone. So if they can get Fortnite to run on my phone, I'm pretty sure that they can get it to run on the Nintendo Switch. Um, I think that I think that's almost a foregone conclusion at this point that Fortnite is going to be coming to the Switch. It would be foolish of they would, they would be leaving money on the table to not do that. Now, what else is in this quote unquote leak, which is just a rumor. It could be anybody uh, just making up some stuff. This is a, a, apparently some uh, alleged uh, Nintendo internal documents were leaked online. I, I don't know, you know, all of this stuff, again, just ignore the fact that it could never happen. But let's just talk about what else there is. And I, it's kind of exciting. Uh, Fallout 3. All right. Fallout 3 is a possibility uh, for coming to the Nintendo Switch. And I think that that's actually a really, really good fit. Uh, we already have Skyrim uh, on the Nintendo Switch. And I believe, if I'm not wrong, that Skyrim and Fallout 3, they are running the same engine. Uh, so basically what Bethesda tends to do is they will make an engine and then they will use that same engine to make an Elder Scrolls game and the same engine to make a Fallout game. And when you take those two, uh, they're basically the same game. They're an open world game. One is set in a medieval kind of place and the other one is set in, you know, a post-apocalyptic future kind of place. But essentially they're the same game. And, you know, Bethesda already had somebody port Skyrim over to the Switch along with motion controls. Uh, Bethesda has also had Doom ported over to the Switch along with the motion controls. They have Wolfenstein 2 coming out this year on the Switch, also with motion controls. So it's clear that Bethesda is looking at the Switch and they're like, this is a platform that we want to be on. What else can we bring to the Switch that really wouldn't break the bank for us to do? And Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas make total sense. Now, there's no mention of Fallout New Vegas here, but Fallout 3, that makes a whole lot of sense. Uh, they just hire the same company to port that over, and I think that that would be awesome. Uh, so now that we've got that out of the way, let's talk about other things that are apparently in the document. Uh, games that are going to be shown at E3. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's true, though. All right, so 
uh, this is going through the whole direct basically. Uh, and if you don't want to be spoiled on that, then uh, if, if you want to see the Nintendo Direct at E3 uh, with fresh eyes, knowing nothing about it, then I suggest you shut the show off now because I'm going to talk about things that are probably not true but might be true and it might spoil the surprise for you. All right, so now that I've got that out of the way, and honestly, I probably should have said that earlier, uh, let's take a look at the rest of this document. Uh, okay, so first off, it says that it's going to intro a trailer showing Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Now, if you don't know what Dragon Ball Fighter Z is, it's a game that came out, I think it was last year, on PS4 and Xbox One. I don't know if it came to, to PC or not, but it's a traditional 2D fighting game with ridiculous, ridiculously cool graphics. Like, it looks like you are watching a Dragon Ball cartoon. And I, I've never really watched a Dragon Ball cartoon, but you can't live in today's day and day and age without knowing what Dragon Ball cartoons look like because, you know, they're on YouTube and they're filled with me. They're, they're good meme fodder. Uh, so... The idea of this game coming to the Switch, you know, hopefully it runs as good as it does on the PS4 and Xbox One because that game looks absolutely gorgeous, just really, really gorgeous. Um, and I think that they would have to bring it down a notch to bring it to the Switch. But, you know, if for some people who only have the Switch, that would be really cool. Uh, all right, what else is on here? We've got uh, FIFA 19, NBA 2K19. All right, so those two games, that shows, for first of all, that uh, I know people will be saying, well, hold on a sec, FIFA 19, does that mean that EA is, is finally on the bandwagon for Nintendo Switch? And the answer is, who knows? Who knows if they're on the bandwagon? Uh, EA is contractually obligated, from my understanding, they, they, their, their contract with FIFA that gives them the exclusive rights to make FIFA uh, soccer games uh, means that they have to put a game out on every platform. Now, I don't know if they that means that they have to put a game out on every platform every year. Uh, if somebody, you know, if, if you're curious about that, then you might want to go back and see how many FIFA games came out on the, on the Wii U because the Wii U, I'm, I'm, I'm almost positive did it got a FIFA game because EA has to, but did it get more than one? And I'm not sure. Uh, NBA 2K19, um, that's cool. I haven't played uh, those games because they're sports games, and I tend not to get into sports games. Uh, then the, they're also showing uh, Crash Bandicoot, Insane Trilogy, Octopath Traveler, and Wolfenstein 2 New, New Colossus. So this intro trailer of the, uh, I can't highlight this, this intro trailer of the uh, of the Nintendo Direct is showing off a lot of third-party stuff, which is something that Nintendo had a huge issue with with the Wii U, is they just weren't getting anything uh, for people to play on. So we basically had to depend on only Nintendo to develop games for it, and that really kind of sucks. Uh, putting in chat says, so hyped for Octopath, and I'm with you there. I think that game is looks super fun. I am excited for it. All right. After that, they're going to show us uh, they're going to show us some Super Smash Brothers uh, rumored to be developed by Bandai Namco. That is still not um, confirmed. And then uh, I'm sure that that's going to be a big section of the Nintendo Direct. And then after that, they're going to show Punch Out become the champion. This is going to be developed by Next Level Games. And I am very excited for this. Uh, I loved Punch Out on the NES. I was really unhappy with it on the NES Classic, and that's because there's some kind of lag that gets introduced uh, with the emulation that makes it really difficult to get the timing right. And in, in Punch-Out on the NES, it's so important to get the timing just exactly right. Um, I, in fact, I even watched... Um, I can't remember who it was, but somebody had like the the world record guy uh, who had has like the world record for beating uh, punch out the fastest amount of time or something like that. They had him come on and they hooked up an NES classic and tried it. And then they hooked up a regular Nintendo and tried it and he could not beat the game uh, on the NES classic, but he was able to beat the game 
on the uh, on a real NES. Uh, so, you know, I was a little disappointed with that. But I'm a big fan of Punch Out, and then I never played Super Punch Out for no particular reason. Uh, but then when Punch Out came to the Wii, I picked that up, and that game was really fun. And you know, it had motion controls, but I, I'm pretty sure that you didn't have to use the motion controls. And I was a big fan of playing Punch Out on the on the Wii. I thought it was really fun. Um, so for them to be bringing a Punch Out game to the Nintendo Switch seems awesome. I really kind of hope it has the same um, the same movement mechanics as um, Arms does, where the camera is behind and you can move around the ring instead of just being locked in a position where the character's in front of you and you are over here. If that makes sense, like I like the idea of being able to move around the ring a little bit, uh, not like the the crazy jumps and uh, you know that kind of thing. But I really think that uh, some of the arm stuff would be kind of cool, it, just for for the movement to change up the punch out formula a little get a little bit. All right, the next the next thing on the list, also supposedly developed by Bandai Namco, is Metroid Prime, and we have a title here, Renegade. So Metroid Prime Renegade is going to be shown. Now that doesn't mean that it'll be released this year. And of course, like I said at the beginning, this list could be a bunch of BS. Uh, but Metroid Prime Renegade, I like that title. I really do. But you know, that's all we that's all that we would know about it right now. Um, I don't expect us to see Metroid Prime launched this year, which is one thing that makes me a little shaky on this list because Nintendo originally said that, hey, we're going to be bringing out um, a Metroid game. And then in their financial documents, they listed uh, they listed Pokemon. Uh, and I've talked about this on the show before, but they listed Pokemon is coming out in fiscal year 2018. And then when they said Metroid Prime, it just said to be determined. So we don't know when that's coming out. It could be um, two more years down the line. Um, in fact, the only reason that I believe that Nintendo mentioned Metroid Prime at all at E3 last year was because they were unveiling a new Metroid game for the 3DS. And if they didn't, if they didn't say that they were working on a Metroid Prime game, and then they just released that uh, the game on the 3DS, which by all accounts is a very good game, people wouldn't people would have been really unhappy about that, I think. And I think that forced Nintendo to say, yes, we're still working on Metroid Prime. It's very early. That's why all you get is a logo reveal, basically. Um, and remember, last year, when they showed that logo, people lost their minds. They they absolutely lost their minds. Uh, so hopefully, that if, if, if we're going to see anything from it, that means it's going to come out this year. Because Nintendo uh, said... I think at their most recent investors meeting, I believe Nintendo said, look, uh, E3 is going to be all about the games that are coming out this year. Now, I don't mean I don't know if that means this fiscal year or this calendar year, but they said that it means it's coming out this year. So if we see Metroid Prime at E3, then I think it means that it's coming out this year. Um, so, you know, cross your fingers because that's I'm, I'm, I'm excited for that. All right, let's take a break and we'll come back to the rest of these. All right, let me get a drink. And we'll name that <clears throat> part one. Yeah, Zap, I'm sorry, man. My son loves Punch Out because he can press one button and still succeed. Really? Like, I always thought Punch Out was a really hard game. <sighs> yeah, Zab does have a tech curse. <clears throat> Somebody's mowing the lawn. Hopefully, that doesn't get picked up in the show, but if it does, we'll live. All right. All right, uh, we're back. So the next uh, item on the list is the Splatoon 2 Octo Expansion. 
Uh, not much to say there. We've already seen some of it. We know that it's coming out this year. We'll probably uh, find out a little bit more. Maybe we can find out like the lore behind why it kind of has a zombie vibe vibe to it. At least for me, it does. Uh, and then there, here's something that we've been waiting to hear about for a while. I mean, last year, was it last year or was it before that? I think that back in January of last year, before the Switch even came out, uh, they were talking about games that, that they were going to be working on. And one of the things that they said, and I could be wrong about the timing of this, but they said that we would expect to see a new Fire Emblem game, like a traditional Fire Emblem game coming to the Nintendo Switch. And that's a big deal because uh, we haven't seen a Fire Emblem game come to Switch since the Wii. And or, or, I'm sorry, come to console since the Wii. It's basically been a DS game. And it, it got a lot of popularity there. And um, I guess the new one is supposed to be called Fire Emblem Memories. And I think that sounds kind of cool. Also developed, this is developed by Intelligent Systems, which they are, they they develop all of those ones. They're really good at that stuff. Uh, then we, we got Fallout 3 Anniversary developed by Bethesda, of course. You know, it's the same thing that we have already talked about. Um, We've got Yoshi's Flipping Island. So uh, that is, I, I'm assuming that that's that Yoshi game that uh, as up to until now didn't have a title. I don't think that it's going to be a second uh, Yoshi game. So this is a 3D Yoshi game, Well, but it's still like a side scroller. But I don't, just because the name Island is in the um, the title, I wouldn't expect it to be uh, you know, with, with the Yoshi's Island crayon based, uh, graphics, uh, it's still going to be the 3d thing. At least I, that's what I'm thinking. Now I already talked about the Pokemon let's go Pikachu, uh, and Eevee editions, uh, developed by Game Freak. I want to know if this was true, which one are you guys going to get? Are you going to get the Pikachu version or are you going to get the Eevee version? And, I honestly don't know. Like, I like Pikachu a lot, but I also, what little I know about Pokemon is that Eevee can uh, change into a bunch of different stuff. So it makes it really hard for me to decide. I don't know what I would do there. Uh, this one was a big surprise. I, I, I figured for sure that, that Nintendo had written off this series, but this is weird. F-Zero SX, developed by Platinum Games. That is surprising to me. I thought for sure that F-Zero was gone. F-Zero was done. We weren't going to be seeing any more F-Zero games because it just seems like it's been ages. Like, what's it been since the GameCube? So two full console generations have gone by and we have not seen a new F-Zero game. And people have been asking for it. It's not like people don't want a new F-Zero game. But... I am just surprised to see this on the list. So, I don't know. Maybe this is one of the reasons why the list is a bad list. Who knows? Then we've got Fort, uh, Fortnite, which I already talked about at the beginning of the segment. And then uh, there's been rumors that Retro Studios is working on a space uh, racer fe featuring Star Fox. And this is called Star Fox Lilat System. Now... The fact that we've got a rumor out there that there's a Star Fox possible racing game coming is pretty surprising to me. And then to have it mentioned in the same uh, list as another racing game, F-Zero, uh, that is a huge surprise to me. So, I, I don't know, maybe the list is uh, garbage, maybe... Uh, the rumors that Star Fox is going to be a racing game is wrong. Maybe the idea that F-Zero is going to be wrong. I don't know which one is most likely. I'm curious as to what you guys think. Again, take this list with a grain of salt. It doesn't mean that it's true. Uh, anybody can fake this stuff very, very easily. And a lot of people do. And why am I talking about it? Again, there's not a lot of news to talk about because we're close to E3. All the all the game companies are clamming up and maybe this is true, maybe it's not, but there's only one way to find out and that's to wait until E3. 
All right. Part two, save. Uh, we got Pikachu, 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 Eevee, Eevee. Um, what's the diff? Vaxer wants to know what's the difference. The difference is in one of them you can get Pikachu, and the other one you can get Eevee. I'm assuming. Um, what do you mean mobile game? I don't think it's a mobile game. I think it's a, uh, I think it's the Switch game. If Fortnite would come to the Switch, will it be free? Vaxer, that's a good question. I would assume so, because we already have examples of free games on the Nintendo Switch. We've got that, um, what's the name of that game? Uh, Pinball FX3 is a free game, and that's on the Nintendo Switch. So I don't see why Fortnite would suddenly charge money. Now, if they put out a physical version, then yeah, it's going to cost money, but I don't I don't see why they would charge money for it. They're making money so fast and giving it away for free. It would be foolish of them to get in the way of that. All right. But the microtransactions in that game aren't bad. They're just like, wear a stupid helmet or have a crazy wings. They, they don't actually affect the game. So that's fine. All right. Let's close that and look at the next story. Okay. So we've got two more quick stories that I want to talk about before we wrap things up. Uh, the first one is this game that I'm not excited for, but I thought it looked interesting, and that is a game called Go Vacation. Now, this is an old Wii port. And the reason I'm talking about this is because I think that we're going to start seeing is games coming to the Nintendo Switch that have been on previous platforms from third party titles. And that's an, and, and because of this, it kind of got me thinking about the virtual console. Um, I think the virtual console brand is dead. I mean, I, I know that because Nintendo has said that we're not bringing virtual console to the Nintendo Switch. But the idea that third parties can just take a game that they've already made, bring it over to the Switch, and say, hey, buy it again, that's what Nintendo was doing with Virtual Console. So we look at games like the ACA games, the Neo Geo games that have been, bring, that have been coming over to the Switch um, since the Switch came out, basically. We've been getting these over and over and over again. Um, you know, those games... I think that the NES, the N Nintendo Entertainment System, Nintendo Switch Online, terrible title, by the way, I think that stuff is going to be only Nintendo games. And I, I looked it up, and I think I read that there were 79 first-party titles for the Nintendo Entertainment System. So that means that I am assuming that we will get a maximum of... 79 NES games for the uh, for the N Nintendo Switch Online, like the stuff that you get with your with your subscription, and that's fine. And if third party devs like they don't want to have to pay, uh, they don't want to have to wait for Nintendo to do stuff. I think that they're just going to start uh, releasing their games on their own on the eShop. So I fully expect that at some point we'll see, you know, we, we are already getting a Mega Man collection. It wouldn't surprise me if Sonic would bring out, or Sonic, if Sega would bring out a Sonic collection. Uh, you know, we might see uh, companies like Capcom bring out, uh, I mean, they're already bringing out a Street Fighter co collection. Maybe they'll bring a Castlevania collection. And that might be the way that virtual console games go on the switch in the past um most of the time uh nintendo has said look if you want to bring these old games we'll sell them through the virtual console but now that nintendo has said we're done with virtual console i think that that takes the shackles 
off of the third party developers to bring their old games to the Switch. And I think that's a really good thing because before Nintendo would say, uh, we want this, but we don't want this, and we want this, but we don't want that. So now I, th- I can fully see, you know, Square Enix bringing uh, Final Fantasy games to the Nintendo Switch. Hopefully, you know, like they're not like the Steam version of Final Fantasy VI, which is basically a ported version of the of a of like the cell phone game of Final Fantasy VI. Hopefully, it looks like the original Final Fantasy VI, and you know, Square has learned from their mistakes in the past. Um, I think that we can see games like that coming to the Switch under instead of this virtual console thing. And the whole reason I started thinking about this is because this Go Vacation is a game that was on the Wii and now it's being brought over to the Switch and Nintendo's like hyping it up on on their YouTube channel and stuff like that. And it just got me thinking about uh, what old games can come over. And like, I just spent a bunch of time talking about how Fallout 3 would be perfect for the Switch and I'd love it if it would come over Um, And it makes a lot of sense for these developers to get money for their old stuff. Now, what games, non-Nintendo games, this is my question to you guys. What non-Nintendo games do you want to see come to the Switch uh, that you've probably bought before, but you might buy again because they're going to be uh, on a portable system? Uh, For one, for me personally, I would really like to see Final Fantasy Tactics come to the Switch I would like to see the Mass Effect games come to the Switch, Um, you know, that kind of stuff. So I'm curious as to what you guys want. Uh, Let me know. There's a bunch of ways that you can get a hold of me and let me know. One of them is you can email me, runjumpstomp at gmail.com. You can call and leave a voicemail at 260-RUNJUMP. That's 260-786-5867. You can tweet at me at runjumpstomp. You can... Uh, join our Discord server over at runjumpstomp.com slash Discord. And once you get in there, there is a hashtag uh, or there's a channel called Switchcraft Questions. I was looking over at it to see what it said. Um, you can join that and you can you can give your feedback about this. Uh, so make sure that you you let me know. Um, let's see. Link31254 says Amplitude. I'm not familiar with that one. Pudding says Final Fantasy X and Ten Two. I know that there's a buddy of mine, uh, that chap, Zap, who's also a podcaster and uh, a streamer over at twitch.tv slash that chap Zap with two Ps. Um, that's like his favorite game of all time is Final Fantasy X and Ten Two. And uh, Fisto says that they would love to see a Bioshock collection. That's really good. That's a great idea. Uh, So we've got all of these games. Oh, you know what? Here's one that I didn't even think of. Shining Force. I would love to see Shining Force come to the Switch. Now, if you don't know what Shining Force is, it's a... It's a game series that is very much like Fire Emblem, but I always liked it more than Fire Emblem. I can't put my finger on why I liked it more than Fire Emblem, but it was by Sega, and it was on the Sega Genesis. Uh, They had two games on the Genesis, um, Shining Force 1 and 2, and then Shining Force 3 came out, I believe it was on the Saturn or on the Dreamcast, and I can't remember which one. Um, Pudding says Final Fantasy 13 was nice. And actually it was once you got past the, the tutorial, which I had that game on the Xbox 360. And as I played that and I, I put 50 hours into it before I got out of the, the tutorial and I really had a lot of fun, but the tutorial was a little slow. And then once I got out of that, uh, man, that game really opened up, and then my my save game got deleted, and I was really unhappy about that, and I never played it again. Uh, but I, I enjoyed Final Fantasy XIII myself. Uh, I know that a lot of people uh, disagree there. All right, we've got one more story, and that is that there is a new f- issue of Famitsu, and I guess it has information on the uh, Professor Layton game, uh, which I, I don't know anything about. Professor Layton. I've never played one of those games. I know that they're very popular on the on the Nintendo DS and 3DS, and uh, people really really like them. Um, but I really don't know much about it. 
uh, other than it's apparently coming to the Switch, and I know that people are going to be excited because people love these games. Uh, I've never played one, but now you know it's on its way. Um, I don't know. Stuff, I guess. I'll just call it stuff. All right. <clears throat> All right, everybody, before we get out of here, I want to take a second to thank Ryland with X's in the beginning and the end of that. Uh, they gave the show five stars and they said Switchcraft was an awesome podcast. So I would really appreciate that. They did that over on Apple Podcasts. If you want to help, that's one way to help is you can just give the show a review. The more people that give us five stars, the higher our rating gets. Right now, I think it's sitting at around 4.5. Um, so if you could get over there and review the show, it would be a huge help. Um, if you don't use Apple Podcasts, but you want to help out, just share the show with a friend. That would be a huge help as well. Uh, don't forget, if you want to watch the full show, uh, there's a couple ways that you can do that. You can either tune in live on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 3 p.m. U.S. Eastern and on Saturday at whatever time. Uh, and if you want to know where to do that, that's twitch.tv slash runjumpstomp. Just open that up now. Hit the follow button. Next time that I go live, you'll get a notification. Run, Jump, Stomp has gone live. You hit the button, and you can watch uh, the show happen right then. If uh, those times don't work for you, then you can always watch the video after the show uh, over at uh, youtube.com slash run, jump, stomp. Uh, if you head on over there and you hit the subscribe button uh, and then click on that little bell, every time that I post a new video, you'll get a notification. And I post videos there other than just the um, other than just the uh, the show. I also do the NES archive. I have video game reviews. I have previews. Uh, and you know, because YouTube changed the way that they do things. I got demonetized because I didn't have enough subscribers. So I need to hit a thousand subscribers and I need to hit a certain number of watch hours. So something else that you can do to help is when you go to sleep at night, just turn on your computer, go to the Switchcraft playlist on my YouTube channel, hit it to play, turn off your monitor, turn off the sound, and uh, just let those minutes add up because it would really help out. Um, if you are looking to support my content, you can do so uh, by joining the Patreon, or you can just head over to runjumpstomp.com slash thank you. There's going to be a bunch of links there to help out. I really appreciate everyone who has already supported the show, and other people that I appreciate are the people who come here and hang out with me while I record the show every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. You guys are awesome. The show would not be the same without you, so let's take a moment to thank the chatters. We've got Kodiak Moonwolf, Snow Goes Ham, That Chap Zap, Vaxer, um, Adisol 6, Awate 86, Backback B, uh, Kaj Nodge, I don't know how to say that, man, uh, Aerslia, uh, we've got... Uh, Join Jess, Link31254, Lumber Joke 2, Fisto, Pudding, Simple Monk, Slow Cool, Super 80s, The Ginger Doctor. Uh, you guys are awesome. Thank you for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate it. You guys and the lurkers. And of course, let's make sure that we thank uh, the music. Uh, the people that make the music, we've got Tom Winter and Note Block. They are over on YouTube. Make sure that you check out uh, their music on YouTube. I appreciate them for letting me uh, play their music on the audio version of this show. I'm out of here, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.